Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you an exciting dramatization of an unforgettable story on the Hallmark Playhouse. Tonight's story was chosen from the world of fiction by one of the world's best-known authors. Hallmark is proud to present the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present a dramatization of Phil Stong's excellent novel, State Fair. I suppose even its title alone will conjure up something of its flavor, for it is indeed the story of days that have an especially warm place in many Americans' hearts, those few days of the annual state fair which I looked forward to with excitement and remembered with affection. Almost a century ago, Mr. Stong's grandfather was one of the founders of the Iowa State Fair, so that state fairs, you might say, run in the family. Anyhow, the story we are presenting tonight handles this rich material with simple effectiveness, and Mr. Stong's characters might well be the next-door neighbors to millions of us living in America today. I suppose you could say, if you wanted to be funny, that the real hero of State Fair is a pig. But a pig is a very wonderful animal, especially with pork at its present price. So here now is our State Fair, a first-rate story with no message except that America is a pretty good country and its State Fairs are pretty good places to go to. But before we begin, Frank Goss has a message from the people who bring you these stories. There are Hallmark cards for every memorable occasion on your calendar. For birthdays, anniversaries, holidays. Yes, for every occasion that calls for remembrance, for a friendly greeting, a word of good cheer, an expression of sympathy. There is a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And that identifying name on the back, Hallmark. Well, that says you cared enough to send the very best. And now, State Fair on the Hallmark Playhouse. All right, all right, you take Virginia ham. Sure, it's famous, but it's made from ordinary Razorback. Not like we have here in Iowa. You give a Hampshire hog the same opportunity as a piece of Virginia Razorback gets, and you'd have manna. Yes, sir, manna. Look at my blue boy. Now, there's a hog. There's a... Hi, Ira. Hi, Abel. How's the corn this year? Going to win a prize? Thus held forth Abel Frake in the stock pavilion of the Des Moines State Fair. Abel Frake, farmer of Brunswick, Iowa, here at the fair with his great Hampshire hog, Blue Boy, to win a prize or forever hold his peace. With Abel were the three other Frakes, Margie, Wayne, and his competent wife, Melissa, who had made up her mind to win a prize for pickles. While Abel Frake was defending the good name of the Hampshire hog, his son Wayne was listening with scorn and grimness to a hard-faced concession barker who had taken him aside for some bitter and threatening talk. You know what I'm talking about, all right? Ruling my business, crabbing the act, what's the big idea? Listen, it isn't my fault all the stuff I won on your hoopla game was phony. You made a fool out of me in front of that crowd. Maybe. But I didn't make a crook out of you. What's that you say? You heard me. You know I could go to the state fair board and have you put in jail for libel. Criminal libel. Ah. You'd spend a night in jail, at least. Oh, would he now? Hey, what's that? My father's an inspector of detectives. And I say this young man wouldn't spend a night in jail. You would. Hey, how did you get into this? You just keep on asking full questions. I'm looking for a policeman. I can fight my own battle. Hey, just a minute, little girl. Uh, the kid was ruining me. You were out there. You saw it. Why don't you hire him to stay away from your game, then? What? Ten dollars and he won't pitch any more hoops at your stand. I won't take it. He hasn't offered it yet. And I won't. Hmm, but he will. Well, sonny boy, he will. I 
live in here. An auto trailer? I live here with my father. Huh. I've never been in a classy trailer like this. You want a drink of anything from the refrigerator? It's got a refrigerator? It's got everything. Well, where's your mother? It hasn't got that. Oh. And you won't see much of my dad either. It's a lucky thing for me. He's an inspector of detectives. He inspects detectives to see if they're after him. Hmm? <laughs> Mostly father plays the horses and runs a numbers racket. Oh. Is that bad for me? With you? I... I never met anybody like you. I bet you think my skirt's too short. Mm-hmm. You don't like me. Oh, oh, yes, yes, I do. Well, in that case, my name is Emily. Well, my name is Wayne Frake. I liked you the minute I saw you. Oh. Was that all? Are you glad or don't you care? Well, uh, you see, uh, I have a girl back in Brunswick. Oh. But I'm glad you like me. Where do you live? Tent City on Campers Hill, like all the fair visitors. What's her name? Who? The girl back in Brunswick. Eleanor? Why are you here? Is your time your own? I mean, my father gets me into the horse races free. Want to come with me tomorrow afternoon? Uh, horse races? Oh, you don't have to bet. I'll do that. You can just watch. All right. I've got two tickets for Blossom Time in Des Moines night after next. You can take me to that, too. Because we like each other. <laughs> Come now to Margie. For Sister Margie, the fair was so far a dreary matter. She wished heartily that her suitor Harry were here so she could at least quarrel with him. She was therefore in a correctly receptive mood when the young man seated himself beside her on the roller coaster, flashing a press card at the concessionaire. The press, the fourth estate, with hair like corn tassels, sitting beside Margie Frake and grinning at her smugly as the roller coaster started rolling. Well, here we go. It's a coin of phrase. They say the first plunge is the so-and-so. Oh, is it? I can't get out now. Why, I didn't know it was high. Well, here's where you find out firsthand. Oh. Ah, here we go. Oh. Hold on to me. No. I'm a great comfort in rolling all this. Campers Hill. I'll walk up with you, but don't go yet. Oh, I've got to. I'm late for supper now. Supper? <laughs> you mean dinner? Oh, well, we country people call the last meal supper. <laughs> okay, supper. I'm only a farm girl. Well, I am a newspaper man. We are taught that time is short, space is costly, and talk is far from cheap. So I won't beat around the bush. You're beautiful. Oh, no. Huh? All right, then. You're pretty. Tomorrow, may I call you beautiful? How do you know I'll even see you tomorrow? You don't have to. I'll see you. I'll be looking for you. Pretty girl. Another day, and then tomorrow. Tomorrow's when they judge Blue Boy, isn't it, Dad? Tomorrow's when Ham really gets dignity. Yeah. <laughs> well, what do you think? Blue Boy will win, I gravely hope. Well, Ma's Pickles ought to get a ribbon or something today, anyhow. What time? Four o'clock. We all better be there. Your mother will never forgive us. Oh, I, I'll be there, all right. I uh, might be a little late. Huh? Gonna have a look at the horse racing. Horse racing? Well, just looking, Dad. No bets. Just looking is all. Wayne, honey, I can't see over the crowd. Just make your elbow stiff at your side. I'll lift you up, Emily. For the whole race? I'm too heavy. You? <laughs> Stiffen your elbows. I've got ten dollars on King's henchmen. Ready? Ready. Up you go. Oh, you're so strong. Uh, you 
you're a feather. Pat, really, I must get up to the exhibition hall now. But why must you? I told you. Mother's pickles are being judged. Oh, don't worry. They'll probably get over the light fine. I've got to be there. All right, I'll go with you. Oh, no. Oh, why not? Oh, I'll have an awful time explaining you. Oh, why? Because of Harry or Brunswick Swain? He happens to be very nice. <laughs> all right, all right. Tell me, when do you think they'll have all those pickles sent? How about four o'clock? All right. See you at 4.01. Pretty girl. Hi. Hi. 401 is stipulated on the front steps of the hall. 401 and so did Mother. <laughs> Every ribbon in the hall, plus a bronze plaque. 401 and so did Mother. Oh, you certainly are on the Iowa corn. What's that? <laughs> Never mind. Come along, pretty gal. The day and the night are before us. <sighs> I've never been up in a Ferris wheel at night like this. <laughs> They've got night navigation down to a science now. Oh, it's so pretty up here. The lights below and the stars above. The night is half a thousand eyes. Here, let me put my protecting armor on. No. The night it hath a thousand nays also. <laughs> Are you having fun? Oh, Pat, such a lot of fun. Good, good. Thank you, Pat. Yeah, end of ride. Could we go someplace where it's quiet and private? Camper's Hill fills the bill. Margie, I want to know, do you love this, this Harry back in Brunswick? Oh, I, I don't think you ought to ask me that. That's right. Harry is none of my business. But I am. So, do you love me then? Well, well, how would I know that after just two days? I know it after just two days. I love you. Oh, it. It takes me longer to find out. I haven't been in love as often as you have. Margie, do you think this doesn't mean anything to me? I just know you've been in love with other women. Look, are you blaming me because there were other women? I'm blaming myself because I was next. I, I might have made love to them, but I never told them this. I tell you, I love you. Did you kiss the others? Probably. Oh. Pat, I want you to kiss me anyhow. In just a moment, we'll return to the second act of tonight's story. But during the intermission, I'd like to tell you about one of the greatest actresses of all time, the divine Sarah. The story is told about the great French actress Sarah Bernhardt after one of her memorable performances of Camille. In the lobby of the theater, one of her admirers was heard to remark, she's magnificent. For three hours, she wasn't Bernhardt at all. She was Camille. A noted critic of the time turned to the enthusiastic speaker and said, that's why she is unique. Others act their parts. Only Bernhardt lives hers. There is the key to great art, the ability to put into a part, a speech, a phrase, warmth and understanding. Those who make Hallmark cards believe that anything as personal as a greeting card should contain that extra measure of friendliness and understanding. That's why you'll notice that Hallmark cards always seem to say just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. 
So it's no wonder that Hallmark cards are chosen with such pride, received with such pleasure. For when your friends turn the card over, as you did, and see the name Hallmark, they'll know you cared enough to send the very best. Now we continue with the second act of the story James Hilton has chosen for tonight, Phil Stong's State Fair. The best hog in the state. That means Blue Boy is the best hog in the United States. That means in the world. I'm the best hog raiser in the whole world. In this awestruck manner did Abel Frakes contemplate the honors that had been heaped upon his giant Hampshire hog that afternoon in the stock pavilion. Blue Boy was the most and the most exalted ham that had ever happened in the state of Iowa. And after his father's triumph, young Wayne, in blue jacket and white flannels, felt easier about going off that night with Emily, a dream in a boat-necked evening gown, to see Blossom Time in Des Moines. Father isn't home as usual. Well, Emily... Oh, come in. Come in? Well, it's still early. Well, all right. I, uh... I want to tell you, Emily... Yes, Wayne? I want to tell you... I had one wonderful time at the show tonight. Please thank your dad for the tickets. I'm glad you enjoyed it. You were so beautiful in that gown... And me in my flannels. I, a king would have felt out of place with you tonight. You're sweet. I just know I never felt so proud being with a girl. What about Eleanor? Well, she's different from you, Emily. Yes, but is that good or bad for my side? Well, how do you mean? Well, I don't know about farms or pickling things or raising prize hogs. Well? Eleanor does. Eleanor has to. That's what I mean. She had to know those things to be worthy of being a farmer's wife. Girl, I mean, I'm just at a fair for farmers because of the gambling. Because of my dad. Well, you go where your dad goes. I've won $140 on the horses so far. I thought that's something you ought to know. Why? I think it's all right for the wrong girl to fall in love with the right boy just so he doesn't fall in love with her. Emily, how do you know I'm not in love with you? Are you? Suppose I am. That'd be wonderful for me, but awful for you. You're the most beautiful, exciting thing I ever knew. And I'm going to kiss you. A girl always appreciates fair warning. Well? Well? Does this prove I love you? That's nice. It's a nice note for saying goodbye. Good night, you mean? No. Goodbye. Oh, no. Oh. Gee, what's the matter with you? Don't you love me? I didn't say that. Then you've got to marry me. I love you, Wayne. But I wouldn't marry you for anything in the world. Emily, please quit all this mysterious stuff and tell me what you're thinking. I've loved you. Why? Because you were fine and straight and different. And sweet. And because you deserved it. But can you imagine me on the farm milking the cows? That's all you know about it. The hired hand milks the cows. That is all I know about it. That's what I mean. A farmer's wife has to be useful, not ornamental. Oh, no, Wayne. The minute I saw you, I wanted you. But I knew I'd rather die than marry you. I'm afraid of what would happen to us. It's, it's a queer way to end something that's been so nice. Wayne, your parents don't know about me, I'll bet. No. You see... Oh, Wayne, dear, you came to the state fair and you found a girl who at least did you no harm. Let it go at that. What, what'll become of you? You'll find your kind 
I'll find mine. And we'll both be happy. I hope so. I hope so. I'm older than my age. I'm wise. Really, I'm wise. And I know. Goodbye, Wayne. It's been sweet. Goodbye. This way, you'll always love me. You'll love me, but you'll be happier with somebody else. If that seems sinful, blame it on a girl you met at the state fair long ago. I won't mind, dear. I won't mind. building. Hurrah for industrial buildings, I always say. Oh, I haven't seen the exhibit from the Des Moines Register. Uh, let me understand you. You want to see a newspaper exhibit? Yes. Why? Well, there's some wonderful linograph machines to look at for one thing. Linograph? No. Type. Line of type. Oh, oh well, I'd like to see them. <laughs> Margie, I'd love for you to see them, but uh, most of the boys in there know me. Uh, what I mean to say is that... No, Pat, wait a minute. You said what you meant to say. No, no, Margie. You don't want them to see the city sophisticate with a country girl. Margie, I'd rather be seen with you than with anybody else in this world. But not until you promise me one thing. What is it? Promise you'll marry me. Marry you? Tomorrow. Tonight, as soon as I can scare up the county clerk. Huh? Well, what's marrying you got to do with it? Well, just this. It, it, it never does a girl much good to be seen with me by those hard-boiled newspaper men. They... They know my, uh, well, my reputation with women, and they'd make some fast, hard judgment about you. Oh. You want to make a good woman of me in advance? Oh. That's no way to put it. Pat, we'd better sit down on Campers Hill and talk about this. Well, nothing to talk about. All you have to do is say yes. Come on, though. Campers Hill will fill the bill. Tonight it hath a thousand eyes. I hope for the thousand and first eye tonight. Say me not nay, Margie, huh? Pat, have you thought that if I marry you, I'll tie you to a town you won't like? And to one woman all your life? Because I wouldn't stand for other women. And you'll hate Brunswick, and I wouldn't like the city. I know it. And you'd like other women. You can't help it. But I'd love you. You'd get tired of my qualities. I can run a house, and I understand a farm, and I love the life. I want four or five children, and they grow up to bring more land into the family. Margie, whose children? Why, I... I suppose Harry's. Oh, Marge, you don't love that farmer, do you? I know that he loves me, and that I love his kind of life. I'd never have to be afraid of anyone else. He'd always love me because I'm right for him. Maybe that's what perfect love is, after all. Being exactly right for someone. I won't give you up, Margie. I love you. Don't, Pat. Let me go. I love you. I want you. No, Pat. No. I'm sorry. You... You don't think you could ever be happy with me? No. You may be right. I am right. I'll walk you up the hill to your tent. No. No, I'd rather finish the episode alone, Pat. Farm girl. That's right. Now and forever. The girls in Des Moines are the yokels next to you. Goodbye, Pat. Goodbye. Pretty girl. Blue boy. <laughs> oh, 
nice fair while it lasted, Marge. Yes. Our family took away practically all the prizes. Practically all. You say that funny. Oh, I, I didn't mean anything. You, uh, stayed out pretty late these last few nights at the fair. So did you. Who did you meet? Who did you? Look at it this way. We came to the state fair and met... met somebody who at least did us no harm. Let it go at that. Did us no harm and maybe did us a lot of good. Maybe? Oh, it's going to be good to get back to the farm. Until the next state fair. <laughs> In a moment, James Hilton will return to tell you about next week's story. Meantime, I'd like to remind you that there's nothing like one of those colorful Hallmark dolls from the land of make-believe to make a child's eyes light up with joy. There are 16 dolls in all, Little Miss Muffet, Cinderella, Little Boy Blue, and 13 other childhood favorites. Each one wears a hat topped off by a jaunty plume that's a real feather. Each doll stands up by itself, and each one has a clever rhyme story about the doll inside. Children really love them. Grown-ups do, too because Hallmark dolls are the perfect answer on many an occasion. A children's party, for instance. You couldn't ask for nicer favors or more appropriate place cards than these unique Hallmark dolls. Or as rewards for good behavior. Children will be as good as good can be when they know that the reward for faithfully following your instructions will be a new and different Hallmark doll to add to their collection. And remember, these colorful, feather-hatted Hallmark dolls are just as grand for children who live far away from you as for those in your own home. Hallmark dolls, you see, are just as easy to send as any Hallmark greeting card, and they cost only 25 cents each. See all 16 of the charming and colorful Hallmark dolls tomorrow at the store where you buy your Hallmark greeting cards. Now here again is James Hilton. Before I tell you about next week's story, I think you should know who the very fine performers were in our cast tonight. They were Barbara Isla, Barbara Fuller, Sam Edwards, Tony Barrett, Earl Ross, and Peter Leeds. Next week, we shall present on our Hallmark Playhouse To Marry With Love by Richard Sherman. It's a tale of faith, romance, and loyalty set against the colorful background of New York City in the 1920s. And the week after that, we shall have a grand story by one of America's finest storytellers, Cimarron by Edna Ferber. And as a special treat, we shall also have as our guest on the Hallmark Playhouse, Miss Irene Dunn. So plan to be listening these Thursday nights. Oh, and just one more thing. Remember when you're driving, ladies and gentlemen, do drive carefully. The life you save may be your own. And so until next week at this time, this is James Hilton saying good night. <laughs> Tonight's story was adapted for radio by Milton Geiger. Our music was arranged and conducted by Lynn Murray. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. Now this is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you all until next week at the same time when James Hilton returns to present To Mary With Love. This program came to you from the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri. Earl Smith and the News after this announcement.